Hello, welcome to the Battling Barrow Gaming and another Terrain Craft uh, video. Um, I got a request from a subscriber called Rob Craig to uh, make a siege tower for the uh, Warhammer Fortress. Um, this is what we're going to be ultimately making. Um, this is fully walk works, all the wheels move, uh, the flaps open and everything at the back here. So we're going to have a go up making this um, and from this you'll be able to use uh, make sort of other types of siege engines uh, this is one I made a while back for Lord of the Rings SVG based on the ones you see in the movies that uh, Yorks use to lay siege to Minas Tirith uh, but before we do that let's, uh, let's have a catch up with Hugo hello Hugo what have you been up to yeah. What's that noise coming from the Lord's Castle? Sounds like they're felling trees and preparing timber. That's the carpenter, that means you're going to be busy. What are they doing? Oh, he's going to war, is he? Okay, well, I think your service is going to be required. Let's get building. Before we get crafting, I should point out that this is going to be used for the Warhammer Fortress, but there were two of them released. There was an earlier one that was made from foam and a later one that was made from plastic. I've got the later plastic edition and I'm looking at pictures. They seem to be about the same dimension, so I'm hoping this will work. But the Siege Tower should be able to be used on different sized walls anyway by the end of it, so hopefully it won't be a problem. So first thing I'm going to do is make the base. I'm just used Hugo here to get a sort of idea of the size, and this is going to be eight and a half inches by ten. But I also need to work out the height. So I've just got a strip here that will be used. So I'm just looking at the castle. I'm going to lay siege to the top gate here and the wall. But the first thing to do is to get these. As I said, it's eight and a half by ten, and you're going to need some others of these. You're going to need one that is eight and a half by ten, another one that is the same width but nine, another one that's eight and a half, and another one that's seven and a half. The beams here, these are one centimeter wide, and I'm going to need one, two of them are going to need to be 18 centimeters, but because two are going to be sloped at the, uh, the back here, um, I need to work out that angle. This seemed like a good idea at the time. I was just placing it 18 centimeters, the top part 18 centimeters up, and the bottom bit at the bottom. And then I was going to just draw the angle that I needed, like so, but this totally failed. So you can safely ignore this. But I sometimes like showing the failures just so you can see the process on how things are done. So. See, I'm trying to work out the angle here. It's all a bit fiddly. You can effectively ignore this as long as you've got two bits of 18 and two bits that are a couple of centimeters longer. I'll show you how I do it properly in a minute. So I'm going to begin by gluing the pieces in, and it's all going to be very rickety at the moment. Um, it does get better. So two 18 centimeters go at the back here uh, and the two angled ones go um, two, the 18 centimeters ones go at the front and the angled ones go at the back once I got it to this stage I could see that my guesstimate was way off so this is the easy way of doing it once you've got it sort of roughly in place you can draw a line here at the top and bottom and just trim it into place really easy before the sort of glue dries it's a bit fiddly. I'm sure there's a mathematical way you could work this out, but hey, I'm not a mathematician. And even after all that, I found it easier just to do one of them, put some weights either side, and then do the other one in much the same way. And that this made it much easier. You will want to let it dry properly before this stage. This is just coming in with some coffee stirrers. I have a load. I bought about 500 years ago uh, for a few quid and I'm still going strong with them. Apologise for my camera not auto-focusing. It was having a bad time here. So I'm just 
cutting off the rounded bit at the end and then just measuring the width of them using the actual frame as a guide cutting that off and then I'll use this as a template to uh, cut the others just making sure that it is the correct height all the way up which it is so now you can put it against another one and trim off top and bottom the longer off cuts you probably will want to keep for later on use don't get rid of those just yet and you're going to need a load of these so best to do this now there will be a slight gap between each one a few mil gap here I'm just laying a load on just to get a rough idea of how many I am going to need to cut Hello Hugo, I'm glad you're here. I need you to work, roughly work out how high I want the floors inside to be. There will be two floors inside. I'm just seeing if this will give you enough room to stand and get your hands in. Now I've sort of roughly worked out, I can sort of do a measurement and really being at 18 centimeters, this would have been easy to have worked out without Hugo, but I like including him. It's six centimeters high each, which will divide the 18 up into uh, three equal sections. Once I've done that, I am just going to put a glue strip all along the uh, front here. Um, I've made a mistake here. I'm This should have been the other way around. The slope, I'll explain once this is built at the end, but the slope should be the other way around I'm gluing these uh, onto the slope section this should have been glued onto the flat section but doesn't matter too much I'm just gluing up to the um, 12 centimeter line uh, that's that'll be where the second floor is and I'm just gonna now put these um, coffee stirrers all in place now for the uh, so angle bits uh, I'm doing it individually I've cut off one end so it's straight and on each one I'm just working out the actual angle I need to cut cutting it and gluing it in place and I'll do this for all of them and these go all the way up to the top not just up to the 12 centimeter line what I'm doing here is working out uh, where each floor's gone, like I've already done, but I'm gluing in little sort of noggins that the floor will sit on. Uh, these will go so the top of the noggin goes onto the line, um, like so. And once you can see here, I've already done this bottom floor, and the floor will just sit there. So now I'm just doing the top floor. And this is both floors in place, but I need to cut some holes so you can gain access to them via a ladder. So for this, I'm just going to use the width of my rule that will govern the uh, where the hole goes. I'm just going to put one here, and this one will be on the left towards the front, and the next floor up will be on the right towards more towards the uh, the back. Once I've cut that out, I'm going to clad it in coffee stirrers. These are going to butt up so there isn't much of a gap between them. So again, like I did before, I'm just going to work out one, use that as the others. I'm also going to clad the sides uh, of the foam where you'll see it. So it's the side there and the sides of the hole. Once I've cut them all out, I can glue them all into place. The top is done in much the same way. I'm just going to uh, clad it in coffee stirrers in the same way as the floors and here's all the floors done I'm not going to glue them into place yet it will make construction and painting a bit easier but you can see they hold in there very very well I've also clad the uh, bottom part of the foam and I'm going to do the same and the end bits here will be done using Strip long strips of balsa wood as the coffee stirrers aren't long enough. The inside bottom floor you could do with coffee stir stirrers, but I'm going to come in with a bit of uh, chipboard that I've cut little gaps out for the support beams. 
and all I'm going to do with it is put in a uh, plank texture so I've done this on numerous videos with a pen I just engrave in score in some thick planks and then with a sculpting tool I just come in and carve in a plank sort of wood grain effect if you had had like a wire brush you could do it with that I guess and this is what it looks like when it's done all that's left to do is just glue this into place in the bottom next up I'm going to cover these long strips of foam here as mentioned coffee stirrers wouldn't be long enough so I'm just going to use some strips of balsa wood at just the same thickness as the foam and the same height as the uh, as the struts are Once they're cut out, they can be glued into place. Now we're just going to uh, do the palisade crenellations around the top. So I'm um, just using Hugo here to get a scale. He loves it. So here I'm just working out roughly how high I need it to be. The highest point I sort of work out will need to be four centimeters and the low points of it will be three centimeters. So once I've got that out of chipboard, I'm gonna cut a long strip that is four centimeters. And two of these will be the uh, width of the tower. That's gonna be eight centimeters and the front bit will be eight, uh, nine and a bit, nine point something, which is effectively the width of the front of the tower plus two lots of the chipboard width. Once I've got that done, I'm just going to work out the crenellation pattern. It's going to be uh, basically it's going to be four holes in with the middle crenellation uh, high bit being double, and I'll cut that out, sort of straighten up one with a ruler and cut that out, and then use that as a template for the other one. And it's on to put in a plank texture on, done much the same way as done before. Planks first with a pen and then wood texture with a sculpting tool. One thing to note about these, because you'll be able to see the outside and inside, that will need to be done on both sides. Next up for extra detail, I'm going to put in some sort of nail heads, rivet heads. For this, I'm just using a plastic rod that I just cut real small discs from and I prepare loads of these because we're going to go on each plank top and bottom around all pieces on the outside and it's just a case of putting in a dab of glue along uh, where I want them and just picking one up at a time with the end of my finger and plopping it into place you may need to clean your finger off after a while as it will get a bit sticky with glue and this is what it looks like when it's complete these then get glued into place around the top end of the tower. One thing that I took into account when I did the measurements was that I'd need half a centimeter to glue it around to the top of the tower. And so I'm just going to glue this into place now with a bit of glue on the edge where the uh, crenellations meet. On the inside, I'm going to put a strip of uh, coffee stirrer and that'll be top and bottom, sort of on the opposite side to where the nails are, just for one, a bit of detail, two, a bit of strength as well. And this is what it looks like when it's all in place. And now just one thing to note is the nails on the outside should match where the uh, strips run along. So here is what the tower's looking like so far. Next up, I'm gonna make the ladders. These are just made from strips of coffee stirrer. Um, this one here is gonna go along the outside and then I'm gonna have two that go on the inside. Uh, so just worked out by eye how high they need to be. And the runs of the ladder are gonna be made from matches. So what I'm doing is 
as normal, just gonna measure and cut one and use that as a template. And being these arm matches, be very, very careful when you're doing this so you don't set fire to yourself, basically. This one go on the outside, so you have to clamber out and climb up. The other two will go on the inside. And I won't glue these into place yet, that'll be one of the last things I do probably in the build to make painting easier. That's where they're going to go. Okay, so the next part to do is the actual uh, flap here that will allow the uh, invaders to get into the castle and a flap here to stop the uh, defense of the castle getting into the siege engine. And the techniques used will be done in much the same way, but we'll have a go at the uh, top one first. So to make a flap, it's going to be made out of a bit of chipboard that's the same width and this one is the same height actually, so it's eight and a half centimeters. And guess what? We're putting a plank effect in. And this will need to be done on both sides. So uh, one thing to note is your planks will have to match up. Uh, the easiest way to do this is once you've drawn the planks in, follow through on the edge, top and bottom, and then use a rule to line those up. And once you've done that, you can come in with a sculpting tool and texture them up. One thing I'm going to do just to add a bit of interest is uh, sort of just not have them so even at the ends just to make it look like they are planks put together. Uh, so I'm just going to cut little nicks and change the uh, length of them with a sharp knife. Once that's done I'm just going to put on the inside a sort of frame out of coffee stirrers. And now to get them to swing I'm going to use a strip of XPS foam, this is 6mm thick and I'm just going to put a wood grain texture into it. Um, the length of these it needs to be about 9cm so it needs to poke out the front and not go quite near the back so I'm just going to texture this up and you will need two of these and what I'm going to do is come in with a bamboo skewer and poke it all the way through, sort of near towards the end, uh, but central height wise. Put that all the way through, like so. Now, these things are the things that protect paintbrushes when you get them, and so I'm going to poke one of those through to protect the. Uh, hole we've just made for, so when the bamboo skewer goes through it won't wear it uh, so I'm just cutting these so they're the same width as the um, foam making sure the holes big enough so they can fit in and here you can see it will fit in perfect and this is going to go on the front here with the bamboo skewer going through and then this will be glued to the bamboo skewer and so it will be able to swing open like so. So I'm just working out how far it needs to poke out because uh, if you put it too far back it won't stay shut if you put it too far forward there'll be an ugly gap so I'm just having the play and then when I'm happy I'll glue it into place. Before that I just want to trim this bamboo skewer into uh, shape into the correct size. Once it's the correct size I can remove it from from the uh, foam on a bead of glue along the end of the ramp and then glue this um, pole into place. Once that's dry, I can pop on the support beams. Have a final sanity check just to make sure this idea is working. And I'm also going to need to, when I glue it, level it up with the floor. And it seems to be working. Glue it into place, I had this idea that I'd hold it into place with these clips. That did not work. So in the end, I just left it without the clips and just kept on checking it to make sure it was okay. 
The bottom ramp is done in a similar way of a bamboo skewer, but here I'm just putting a little spacer to push it out from the edge. Uh, these are two more paintbrush protectors and they will be glued onto the end of the ramp here. And then the bamboo skewer will be glued onto that spacer part, uh, part here is my theory for this one, my thinking for this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue this spacer part onto the bottom in the middle. Then I'm going to glue um, the paintbrush protectors onto the ends. Here I'm using PVA glue. This was a silly idea. In the end, I gave up and used super glue. I've got to let that dry. Um, so I'm going to make these sort of side beams. It's just a bit of extra detail. There's always stuff in Terrain Project you can do while you're waiting for something to dry. And so this is one of them. So I'm just going to eyeball measure them, the angles, and put them across. Um, so this one's going to be as if it was one complete beam going from top left to top right here with that foam bit going over the top uh, but because I want that foam solid in place I am having to do it this way it's not too much difficult not too much of a difficulty doing it this way so once you've got one bit cut like this you can glue that into place and then you can see here I've cut two more into place and now it's going to be two more going across the other way much the same principle except here you've got a few extra cuts for the beams you've already put in and this is what it looks like when it's all done I've done the same on the other side and what I'm gonna do you could if you wanted to put some rivet heads in but I decided to cheat and put nail holes in um, so here I'm just using a retractable pencil with the pencil nib pushed in and I'm just going to do an alternative zigzag pattern down all across the beam across every plank where it would be nailed to. Um, this took a fair while but still quicker than doing the uh, plastic rod rivet heads that we did on the palisade part. Now we can once we've done that this is all dry so we can get back to this. Um, now I'm going to just put a blob of glue across here and I'm using PVA here because I like using PVA for wood and paper based materials so I just find it stronger than super glue. It does take a bit extra to dry but in the end for me it's worth it. So here I'm just going to glue that into place and leave it. And once it's dry we've got a flap, a ramp <laughs> I should say. Now to hold this into place I'm using this which is a butterfly wing clip I believe that you can get in stationary stores. It's just something that opens out and I'm just going to push it in, one part of it in to the frame, into the foam and then the other part will be used to hold the ramp in. Unfortunately my massive ugly hands are in the way so you can't really see what I'm doing. Hopefully it makes sense what I'm talking about and hopefully you know what a butterfly clip is. So there it is in place and then I can lift that bit of the clip up, push it back down and it will just hold it in place and when I paint this you won't really notice it but that will just hold it in place. Not too sure if I have to do something similar for the top, I'm not going to just yet, I'm going to see how it performs. Okay I want to do the sort of lever up clad fronting now. For this I'm just going to use a strip of scrap paper. I'm going to tear it into small sections which would be like the leather hide that would have been nailed or attached to the front to protect those inside. This is like a couple of centimetre wide and about two and a half centimetre long. I'm just going to tear it in and prepare a load of them. Coming in with a watery mix of PVA uh, so it's about it's quite watered down. I'm just going to soak these in and apply them around the uh, front of the tower underneath the opening ramp. 
I want them in sections. I want it to look like bits of leather hide that have been attached to it. I'm doing one row at a time, starting from the bottom. And then once I've done one row, I'm going to come up and do a second row. So they overlap from, so the top layer overlaps the bottom layer. Um, when you get to the sort of angle there, just do it as best as possible. You don't need an exact shape there because it's uh, the paper gets pliable when you soak it in this mixture. You can get a nice looking um, part. And also, if you can, which I forgot to do, so I'm doing now, uh, try and wrinkle, don't attach it flat, try and wrinkle it up so it's all, so it looks like there's some sort of leather texture there. Uh, whilst it's drying, bits of water, PVA water might start to drip down and drip all over the place. So be prepared to uh, dab those off and give it a bit of a clean up. Okay, uh, whilst that's sort of drying, you can concentrate on the bottom where we're going to put the wheels. Uh, this here is a tube that a paintbrush actually came in before we've used the, the tubes that go over the top of the bristles, but this is a uh, whole paintbrush came in these. So, so I'm just going to cut it into thirds because um, it doesn't need to be the full width of the bottom. This has just got to hold a bamboo skewer. Ideally, I would have liked more of the tubes that protect the top part of the bristles but I didn't have any because they're more the same uh, thickness as a bamboo skewer these are slightly bigger so the bamboo skewer will sort of rattle around in it but it is what it is and I'm just going to use some super glue just to glue these into place one in the middle and two either side towards heading towards the front and back and there they are in place and bamboo skewer will go through them and act as the axles for the uh, wheels. The wheels themselves are made from these uh, MDF discs that I got from eBay. Uh, these are 25 mil. I think they said they were 30, but to me they're more 25 mil. Doesn't really matter. They're perfect for what I need them for. But how do we work out the center of a circle? So for this, you'll need to draw a line. Um, this will be called, this is called a chord line. Um, it doesn't matter what size it is here. I'm just making it two centimeters. Um, so you just draw that line and then you draw a line that is parallel to it towards the bottom as long as, and it has to be two centimeters again. Then draw a line corner to corner on each opposite corner of each line. And as long as these lines are the same length and parallel, in the middle here, that will be the center of the circle. And I'm just do a little test, measure it with my ruler, just to make sure, yep, that is in the middle. Next up, I'm just gonna drill a hole using the ping vise uh, into the center. The drill bit I'm using is the same thickness, roughly, as the um, bamboo skewer. It's not quite, but MDS quite a soft material, so I can work the bamboo skewer in. I'm just going to texture the wheels uh, in much the same way as we've done before. So a big, long, uh, thick roof for the planks, and then sculpting tool for texture. And once that's done, I'm going to come along and glue some strips of balsa wood that are a few mil thick just along the outside and allow these to dry. Once they're dry, we can trim them to shape. The wheels are just glued into place uh, and I've done that here already. And now I'm just working out, I need to attach a chain or rope to uh, the ramp here, just to add extra detail and make sure it doesn't drop all the way down. Uh, the rope will be holding into place by, on the palisade and the end of the ramp by a little uh, rectangles of card that I'm just putting into place here and there'll be one either side of the palisade at the top and one either side at the end of the ramp. Now I need to work out how long the chain is going to be. I've decided this is just a 
cheap bit of jewellery, um, sort of costume jewellery that we didn't want in the house anymore. My wife didn't want, so I just used that. I'm going to use that. I'm going to need to work out how high I need to make it. So I'm using the lowest part of the wall that it would uh, lay siege to. Working out how much I need, and I'm just going to cut that into length using a uh, pair of pliers. And then once I've got that cut, I can use that to cut a second piece. So I put a blob of super glue onto the rectangle chipboard, and I'm just using tweezers just to glue it into place. Once I've dried at the top, I can do something similar towards the bottom and uh, put bl blobs of super glue on the rectangles, use some tweezers and put them in place. I'm sorry about my massive hairy paw here. Um, I was in mid concentration and wasn't watching what the camera was doing. But all I'm doing is just gluing it into place. And once it's dry, you can see that it just you have enough slack to go even lower. So if you're laying siege to a smaller castle, you can do. And what I'm thinking now is I'm going to use another butterfly clip just to just to slot into the top here, just to hold it in place. Nothing permanent. It doesn't really need it, but if you're wheeling around a battlefield, it might fly open. On to the painting now. Um, I'm just going to come in with a uh, burnt umber brown. This is just uh, an acrylic paint, uh, and I'm going to paint all over. You can see I've done the inside here, done the outside. One thing I should note before I started painting is I glued the interior floors in just to stop them moving about. But I'm just going to paint this all over the tower, even going to paint the leather hide in this. Once this is dry, I'm going to come in with a light tan. Uh, this is just a tester pot I've got from somewhere. I believe it is called Coastline. It's like a, it's like a Nusapi bone almost in between Carrick Stone and Nusapi bone in Games Workshop flavors. And I'm just going to dry brush this all over. And one thing I am going to do is paint this quite heavy over the leather hide. So it's more of an overbrush than a dry brush. I'm going to paint this all over the tower, across the planks, on the inside and the wheels. On the leather hide, I'm just going to come in with a wash. Um, first of all, I tried uh, Rakef uh, Flesh Wash. I wasn't too happy with that. It looks better on camera than it did in real life. I abandoned that and tried some Agrax Earthshade and was much more happy with this. Final thing to do is to glue the ladders into place. Um, like so. So now it's done. I thought I'd just uh, have a quick showcase of it before we uh, I come back and let you know my final thoughts about it.
yeah, so that's it made. Um, quite pleased with it overall. Um, there are a few things I would have done differently. Um, the main thing being is this leather hide. Wasn't quite pleased with how that turned out. I think I'd use a different material in the future. Possibly uh, baby wipes. Um, I've got a project lined up at some point where I'll use those to show you hopefully what I mean. So yeah, if you're gonna make that, use torn up bits of baby wipes rather than this. You can't really see the individual bits of uh, leather on there as I was hoping. It just looks like almost one massive bit. Um, the other thing is um, that whilst recording this, I noticed, and, and so I kept messing up, talking about front and back, is I've put this round the wrong way. Um, the front bit here should have the flap going down, and the back bit here should have the ramp here at the bottom. I've got it the wrong way around. I don't know how I happened, how that happened, but I could see when I was making it, I'd done it wrong. Um, so don't do what I do. Put this ramp here, here, this ramp here, here, and this leather bit at the front here. Uh, overall, I'm very pleased with it. It's sort of fully working. The wheels spin round, which is nice. Uh, ramps go up and down. That's always good. So it's a, a fully working thing. Um, using this, I showed this at the beginning. You can make uh, different styles. So here is uh, a Mordor one. Um, inside, instead of having like just a thin frame, it's full solid uh, foam, but it's pretty much done in the same way. This bit here is a construction made from bamboo skewers with paper towel, leather paper towel bit at the top. Um, I made this a few years back and I have to say the ramp isn't as good. The ramp is just some two bits of bamboo skewer and then in between them here and here there is just a bit of garden wire sort of making a little hinge and these bits here just hold it in place to stop it going all the way down uh, but yeah general principles are the same it's a foam core frame inside clad in bamboo skewers um, with some ladders going up uh, this doesn't have a back flap to protect the orcs, uh, Sauron doesn't care about this. And it also doesn't have wheels, I never make wheels on this one, so it was just to be put in place and not wheeled into place. But yeah, overall, very pleased with them. Um, they look, kind of look cool. Um, Hugo's panicking now because his lord's built a siege tower, means he's going to go to war somewhere. Will he get conscripted up into the uh, peasant bowmen? We don't know. We don't know. But anyway, that's another video, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have enjoyed it, please like the video. If you really, really enjoyed it, have a subscribe and hit the bell notification so you'll be uh, notified when I do more videos. On the channel here, it's not just about terrain. I cover all aspects of the hobby just because I'm interested in all aspects of the hobby, from painting to playing the games themselves. So uh, if you subscribe to get noted, and set the notifications you can sort of choose which videos interest you if you're just here for terrain videos don't worry there's more of those to come if you'd like it all yeah watch all of them um the community is i'm really enjoying it i'm sort of met some really cool people via this channel i'm enjoying chatting to people in the comments section and just learning new things um they'll let me know something you guys are letting me know something that I've not heard of or a technique I've not heard of and that's brilliant so I'm really enjoying that so I want to say a big thank you to all all the community battling barrow community members you're brilliant until the next video take care